Yes, I'm here. I'm still alive and I'm back on YouTube for after many years of hibernation. But no fear, no further. I'm here for you guys and I'm here to tell you one of my personal experiences for the past couple of months with the Commodore 64. Now you may notice for the past couple of months on my Instagram and my Twitter, which I know you're probably sick of the devil for already, um, I purchased the machine with goodwill and uh, in, as a good investment and so far it's been a pretty good experience. Now the reason why I'm doing this video is because I want to talk about things you need to do or need to know before you make a purchase like this. Um, for especially for those who are just into retro computers or start a game collecting in general. Right, let's get started with the exact model I've got uh, of the Commodore 64 brand is the famous Red Bear model right here, released in 1982. But this particular model I always wanted because it's the most recognized and it's very iconic indeed. Now, this one particularly is in very good shape and all the keys work. I mean, if you just listen to this. Oh yeah, that's pure nostalgia right there. Um, obviously, cosmetically, it's in really good shape. Um, internally, it's actually in pretty good shape as well. Um, now, before you go to eBay and then get yourself one of these things, here's a couple of tips. Now, for this particular model, indeed, it is more difficult to find because, well, this thing is a collector's item, and uh, anybody who hasn't got one of these things who would love to have one will go straight to eBay and basically. Um, snatch it off you before you had your chance. Especially when it comes to auction because the first one I looked at was an auction, um, kept bidding for it and unfortunately the typical thing happened, somebody swapped in the last minute and I lost the uh, bid. Which is a shame really, but luckily shortly afterwards I found a seller who had one of these things, this particular model, uh, a bundle set of uh, various bits of bobs and in including the actual box that came with it. So therefore um, made for uh, wife purchase thanks to some birthday money which at the time I bought this it was across my birthday and obviously um, from my job obviously because I'm still working during this crisis um, yep I finally get to buy this bad boy which I always wanted for quite some time now before you do something like this before you hit the buy button make sure that the seller knows exactly or basically knows how um, these things work and also check if the whole thing is actually in good physical in working order. More specifically the capacitors in there is a key factor because obviously uh, capacitors over time do tend to bulge and leak and obviously that's a bit of a dangerous thing and it could actually damage the board. So if the capacitors is in replaced, make sure it is in really good shape. Luckily mine is, so I've got some time left before inevitably I have to get my sorting iron and eventually stop you know, replacing them. And obviously all the keys work and everything else and to be fair it's been kept in the box for many years so therefore it is in pretty good shape. Right, so that's the machine sorted. Next up, um, you need to know, and this is actually very, very important, um, which was brought to my attention a while back. This is about, if I can get this thing out of the tiny wires, is the power supply. Yeah, the power supply. Now, again, this is very important you need to know, so pay attention. So what's wrong with the power supply? I mean, it works, right? Well, yeah, this particular one that came with the, um, the package does work. But again, this is not usable because due to the fact that it's um, getting quite old and obviously it's not being well built, um, these things do tend to fail badly and the result that it could spike extra power into the Commodore and fry the chips. So this does actually um, work. It's very dangerous. So do not use this unless you like uh, do a very very quick test or whatever to see if your Commodore is still alive and after that put it away straight away because otherwise it could kill it. So what's the solution? Well obviously you get a new power supply more specifically well there may be a few hours out there but one particular I've got is this bad boy right here from a lecture where in Poland. Um, these guys here has been making um, re new power supplies for the machines from the Commodore and I think they did the Amiga um, series as well. Obviously, and uh, these things are well built. It is very light, much lighter than the original. And it has, you can see, an individual switch. You can turn off the switch rather than the computer itself. So it saves some power, which is very important. 
And oh, just in case you want it, they don't make it just for the UK, they've done it for very parts of Europe and the United States, obviously, and for the correct voltages as well. So this right here is a lifesaver. So if you've still got Commodore around or you want to get one of these things, for love of God, get this power supply because at the end of the day it will save your skin for basically have to rebuild the computer again and then basically have to waste more money to try and get Bing Breaker back to life if that's possible. So next up in this list is a particular device you definitely need especially when it comes to gaming is this cassette drive. This particular model is the 1531 dataset. Now you may notice it's in different color compared to the original Commodore 64. Why is it different? Um, for one particular reason, um, it was supposed to be made for the Commodore 16 and the Plus 4 computers. Um, the components inside are exactly the same, except um, the connector is, well, as you can see, um, not compatible with the Commodore 64 itself. So, how do you get around it? Well, luckily, if you have one of these um, with you, with your bundle, or if you had to get an eBay or um, somewhere or another, this particular adapter, um, this is actually made by Commodore himself, is the way to do it. You just connect it to the, uh, so you connect the plug into the adapter and the adapter into the Commodore and then bing, bella, boom, you're good to go. Now my particular one has had a couple of issues, mainly due to the fact that it was dirty in the inside, it didn't read the cassettes properly and it needed to be readjusting. So I took this thing apart, cleaned it up. Uh, clean the heads basically to uh, with rubbing alcohol and then I had to replace the belts because they did look pretty tired and they obviously did go to worn out eventually and also to see as you can see this tiny little hole right here use a tiny little screwdriver to uh, adjust the head to an angle where you can actually read it properly and then basically it now looks and works as good as new so yeah these things are pretty easy to find on eBay. Um, not this particular, I don't know this particular model, but the other one, basically the original one, they're supposed to be re for the Commodore 64. Um, yeah, definitely get one of these if you don't have one with your set. And oh yeah, just a uh, top of the way. Here's the box that came with it, and yeah, I, I'm got very lucky to have a Windows box because that is actually pretty uncommon. But um, no less definitely recommend it. So for my next item it is a very big one indeed and I'm very lucky to get this one uh, for various reasons. It's this bad boy right here which is the 1541 disk drive as you can see right here. This fully functional uh, dr disk drive here is very hard to get these days I'll explain a bit later but uh, you also may notice it's in different color again. This because this particular um, model is for the uh, Commodore 64 C basically is a redesigned model of the Commodore 64 for the late 80s early 90s uh, But this is fully compatible with the original model as well because there's the same components inside now To get one of these things was easy said than done especially when it comes to eBay. So Again, here's a bit of uh, tip and advice of how I got this thing Now trying to get one of these things on eBay is easy said than done and more specifically because there are three ways that you can find these things online either broken for spare parts and all that because that's very common because these things do tend to you know die eventually um or untested which means that he has had it but no one but it's not, does have no way to find out this works or not that's actually quite um, risky but again you mo you will see these quite a lot um or basically um, incomplete <laughs> which means it doesn't have the simulator cable or the power cable to plug this thing in and pretty much all of them are um, basically cost more than you might think so but this particular one I bought is from a seller who basically restores and basically and basically hoards uh, various components from various um, ancient computers and all that mostly Commodore stuff and he actually tested this before he actually sent it off to me after I bought it. So yeah, I got very lucky that I found a seller that actually cares about these um, lovely machines. And he actually had the serial cable and the uh, power cable come up here, which is actually pretty um, rare. 
put it all together and it shipped here in a good packaging and in one piece so if you wanted to get one of these things again do the research look up fairly on ebay and double check with the seller and the condition of the item as well before you press the buy button otherwise you may regret it so finally we come to the final part which is of course the games there's loads of them out there but i'm going to show you a few i've got some in three different formats uh here's the first one it is cartridges yep as of course they can't see four uses cartridges there's one format there's many different types out there but what there's a couple i got already one says golf basically um which i did actually show on my twitter um keep from a capture card uh it's actually a pretty good game but uh yeah these things are actually quite pricey when it comes to terms of you know our boundaries on ebay but it's cartridges what do you expect and um, they're not, <laughs> not easy to come by as well so if you look to have some of these things because they're just so worthy but we come to uh, the next one is the cassettes <laughs> cassettes in this country in particular are very very common they range from small um in plastic cases like these uh, which is very common to slightly bigger uh, plastic cases or boxes as you can see right here to uh, swipe <laughs> quite uh, big ones like these I have bigger ones um, somewhere in storage but um, for now I'm just going to show you some really. yeah these um, come to different boxes and different games some really good ones and um, some basic average ones but yeah cassettes are very very common in this country and they're the cheapest way to get the games uh, for the Commodore 64 so yeah if you want to get um, the most out of your games cassettes is probably the best uh, way forward because they are pretty cheap to get depending again depending on the game um, or if you find ones that are pretty expensive or pretty rare then feel free but again uh, very common so there you go and of course we got to the final one which is probably more difficult to find these days is the discs, more specifically five three quarter inch floppy discs. Um, as you can see, they come in different boxes and different sizes. As you can see, but in general, these is what it looks like. These right here. Now, why is it these are difficult? Well, it's because these things do tend to uh, die or basically corrupt at any time. So yeah, <laughs> that's why if you try to find these things, good luck finding one cheap because. They tend to overprice them quite a lot. Luckily, I managed to find sellers who are basically um, selling these in a pretty decent price. Uh, otherwise, I wouldn't even bother thinking about it. Purchasing um, one of these things if they've gone way overpriced. And uh, obviously, you can see there are various ones from various. Uh, there's a various type of games. So, like one, I got Escape from the for the planes of the robot monsters. A very big one, and uh, the Addis Family, and obviously Super Space Invaders, which actually is a pretty good game. So yeah, discs. Um, if you fancy getting one of these things, uh, I suggest you might as well get a bank loan to get a bundle set because yeah, <laughs> these things are hard to get. Just a quick update. Um, while I was editing, I forgot to mention another thing that uh, needs to be bought is a joystick. Now the mine came with it was a bit loose and uh, well it was well it was useless so I came up and bought this bad boy instead which is called the cruiser I can't remember the full name but it's a very good joystick indeed uh, obviously it has two buttons on the side they both function as one button it depends which side of the joystick you want to use but most importantly listen to this that's right micro switches and this feels really really good so yeah I definitely recommend this if you want to get a joystick yeah and it's actually refurbished as well so this thing is like brand new so yeah I say go for it so there you go that is my experience with the Commodore 64 it's all good but at the same time uh, yeah it can be quite pricey um, so but don't think that puts you off for buying one of these things because if you do that honestly People on the internet will praise you for basically buying what well, basically is a legendary machine. Um, there's one more device I want to show you um, that could actually improve the experience of the Commodore, but um, this is going to be just for another video, and it's this little tiny little device right here, which I'm going to do in the next review tomorrow. Yep, tomorrow you're going to see me showing how to, this thing actually works. 
So, in the meantime, thanks for watching and uh, have a good day. And I'll see you tomorrow.